हेलो स्टूडेंट्स होप यू आर वेल एंड वर्किंग हार्ड टू अचीव योर गोल्स सो एज वी हैड स्टार्टेड आर चैप्टर चैप्टर नाइन पब्लिक सेक्टर अंडरटेकिंग्स एंड ग्लोबल एंटरप्राइजेस इन दिस चैप्टर येस्टरडे वी हैड डिस्कस रोल ऑफ पब्लिक सेक्टर एंटरप्राइजेस इन इंडिया ग्रोथ ऑफ पब्लिक सेक्टर एंटरप्राइजेस इन इंडिया फॉर्म्स ऑफ पब्लिक और स्टेट एंटरप्राइजेस एंड इन द फॉर्म्स ऑफ पब्लिक और स्टेट एंटरप्राइजेस वी हैड डिस्कस डिपार्टमेंटल ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस एंड स्टेट्यूटरी और पब्लिक ऑपरेशन सो टूडे वी विल स्टार्ट और डिस्कस आर नेक्स्ट टॉपिक्स दैट आर गवर्नमेंट कंपनीज इट्स मीनिंग टाइप्स करेक्टरिस्टिक्स मेरिट्स डीमेरिट्स सुटेबिलिटी एंड यूटिलिटी देन वी विल डिस्कस कंपेरिजन ऑफ डिपार्टमेंटल पब्लिक कॉपरेशन एंड गवर्नमेंट कंपनी एंड द लास्ट केस फोर एंड अंगेस्ट पब्लिक एंटरप्राइजेस so first of all we will discuss some key terms that today we are using so first one is capital for example money machines equipments building and raw material these all are included in the capital capital is the large sum of money which you use to start a business or which you invest in order to make more money next is government for example central government state government or a local bodies like panchayati raj or nagar nigam the term government may refers to the manner or a process of governing a country or a specific system we use for controlling the country government also means the group of people who control a country and make national decisions next is company as an artificial person so the company is not made of blood or bones like real person it cannot fall ill or die so it is an artificial person invisible intangible and existing in the eyes of law next is common seal so a company seal is an official seal used by a company this acts as an official signature of the company next is sue for example a company sells goods at a higher prices or produce poor quality of goods that can harm the health of customers so to take legal action against a person or an organization especially by asking in court for them to pay you the money because of that harm that have caused you this is the process called sue next is perpetual succession for example death bankrupt insanity insolvency of members does not affect the existence of the company members may come and go but the company can go on forever it continues to exist even if all its members are dead so the existence of company can be terminated only by law next is departmental organizations so some of the enterprises which are departmentally managed are like post and telegraph indian railways integral coach factory national instruments factory precision instruments factory so these are some examples of departmental organizations under this type of organization business activities of an undertaking are conducted under the overall control of one of the departments of the government it may be run by the central government or by the state government next is statutory or public corporations so like life insurance or life incorporation of india air india international indian airlines corporation oil and natural gas commission food corporation of india central warehousing corporation employee state insurance corporation industrial finance corporation reserve bank of india union trust or unit trust bank of india so these are some examples of statutory or public corporations so public corporations are suitable for running transportation services water and electricity supply undertakings insurance financing and other public utility services so a public corporation is an autonomous business enterprise created by law to conduct the activities assigned to it 
It is a corporate setup under a special act passed by the central or a state legislature, and the special act defines its objectives, objects, powers, and functions. So now we will discuss our first topic that is government companies. So government companies are like Bharat Heavy Electricals Limited, Hindustan Insecticides Limited, Hindustan Steel Limited. Hindustan Machine Tools Limited, Hindustan Cables Limited, Hindustan Antibiotics Limited, Indian Drugs and Pharmaceuticals Limited, Sindri Fertilizers Limited, Hindustan Shipyard Limited, Scooter India Limited. These are some examples of government companies. So, a government company is a company in which not less than fifty-one percent of a paid-up capital is held by the Central government or one or more state governments. Thus, up to forty-nine percent of paid-up capital of a government company can be subscribed to by the private individuals or institutions. A government company is formed and registered under the Companies Act, nineteen fifty-six, which contains special provisions related to the government companies. Next is types of government companies. So types first one is wholly owned government companies. For example, Indian Oil Corporation Limited, Indian Railways, Defence, Water, Electricity. These are examples of companies that are wholly owned by the government companies. So government companies or wholly owned government companies where the entire capital is with the government. Next our type is. Mixed ownership government companies, for example, Maruti Udyog Limited, Cochin Refineries, General Electricals Limited. Mixed ownership government companies where the government and the public are the joint owners, but the major part of the capital is provided by the government. These are the types of government companies. So now we will discuss the characteristics of government companies. so its first characteristic is a government company is incorporated under the companies act 1956 it has a characteristics of a company like it has a perpetual succession and a common seal it can sue and be sued enter into the contracts and acquire property in its own name not less than 51% of the paid up share capital of the government company is held by the government a government company is managed by the board of directors next annual report on the working of the government company is required to be presented to the parliament or state legislature as the case may be a government company obtain its funds from the government shareholdings and other private shareholders the company can file a suit in the court of law against any third party and be sued also a company can enter into a contract and can acquire property in its own name so these are some characteristics of government companies now we will discuss the merits of government companies so first one is it is independent in respect of internal management finance and appointments of personnel a government company is a separate entity and so can manage its affairs on its own it is relatively easy to form a government company as no statute is required to be enacted it is the only form of organization by which government can make use of managerial skills technical know how and expertise of a private sector the management of the government company tends to be cautious and efficient in order to avoid criticism these companies by providing goods and services at reasonable rates are able to control the market and curb unhealthy trade practices next is the merits of government companies so first one is the independent character of a government company exists on a paper only government officials 
ministers and politicians often interfere with its working the board of directors of a government company usually consists of politicians and civil servants who may not be able to found or to follow sound business principles government companies are generally managed by government administrators who are not competent professional managers continuity in policies is not achieved due to frequent changes in chairman and senior officers of a government companies as the government is a sole shareholder the management is in hands of government only next we will discuss the suitability of government companies so first one is when the government wishes to launch an enterprise in association with certain private interest domestic or foreign like hindustan machine tools hindustan cables hindustan steel and heavy engineering corporation were set up for this purpose when the government wants to control a company in the private sector without nationalization because of financial and employment crisis next when the government feels necessary to start an enterprise entirely as a public venture in order to transfer it to the private sector later on when the government feels necessary to promote and develop a or a develop a field of economic activity state trading corporation of india and export trade credit and guarantee corporation are examples in this regard so these are some points of suitability of government companies so next is utility of government companies so first one is when private partnership is also needed along with government where activities of finance are encouraged such as the formation of state trading corporation of india limited where the interest of par various parties is in danger and the last one is where the desire of government is to transfer a new undertaking after its establishment to the private sector so these are some points of utility of government companies next is difference between departmental undertakings public corporations and government companies so first point is formation so departmental organization is created by an executive order of the government public corporation is created by the special act of the legislature but the government company is created under the companies act 1956 next is ownership so in the departmental organization it is wholly owned by the government public corporation is also wholly owned by the government but in the government company at least 51% shares owned by the government that is called the government company next is management and control so in the departmental organization government officials from the concerned ministry is included in the public corporation nominated board of directors and parliamentary control is included and in the government company board of directors may include private individuals also next is legal status so as departmental organization is a part of the government department public corporation has a separate legal entity and government company also has a separate legal entity next is capital so departmental in the departmental organization whole capital is allocated from the budget of the concerned ministry in the public corporation initial capital is provided by the government and in the government company at least 51% of the share capital is provided by the government and 49% are raised from other sources maybe from private institutions or private owners next is staffing so in the departmental organization government employees are included in the public corporation recruitment is done by the corporation and in the government company recruitment is done by the government company next is administrative autonomy so in the departmental organization 
there is no autonomy of freedom of action in the public corporation there is a greater autonomy or uh, in day to day working of the business but in the government company there is a sufficient autonomy that is required for its working next is suitability so in the departmental organization defense and public utility undertakings where at most secrecy and strategic control is a must in the public corporation industrial and commercial enterprises are of national importance and in the government company industrial and commercial enterprises requires participation of domestic as well as of foreign private capital last one is public accountability so in the departmental organization there is a higher direct control of the ministry or control is done by the ministry but in the private in the public corporation there is a higher parliament and the ministry concerned is included means they are accountable to the parliament and the ministry also but in the government company accountability is high and the ministry is concerned with their accountability so these are some points of differences of departmental organization public corporation and government company so the last topic is case 4 and against public enterprises so in this first of all we will discuss some advantages of public enterprises so first one is replacement of profit motive by consideration of public welfare for example indian railways the tickets of indian railways are cheap and affordable that even the poor people can also afford so in private enterprises profit is a prime mover of business life public enterprises therefore become necessary to ensure that society gets all the basic necessities of life at the reasonable prices next is welfare of workers so for example traveling housing salary or holidays etc are expenses are covered by the government for welfare of employees so public enterprises unfettered by the profit motives are likely to reward labor by higher wages and better amenities of life next is end of monopoly so for example as with airtel idea or jio government also provides services as bsnl so private ownership leads to the concentration of industrial power in few hands so the public enterprises instill competition and end monopoly by creating their own services into the market next is balanced growth for example like now every town village has a proper transportation and banking facility so in this form of organization industries which are important due to economic and social considerations get priority in development next is full fuller employment for example in amritsar metro buses flyovers establishment gives employment to lots of people so new projects and schemes are made by the government to provide employment opportunities and gain full employment situation only under socialized production will be fullest possible employment to all adult workers in accordance with the capability of each be secured next is economy of operation for example public enterprises like indian railways bsnl water electricity defense are never advertise their products and save their resources like money because under this ownership there would be a better coordination and greater economy in operation wasteful expenditure by means of advertisement and publication are eliminated in the public enterprises next is development of backward areas for example public banks like state bank of india punjab state corporation bank of india provide services like loans and borrowings in the backward areas so due to operational problems and low rate of profitability private sector is reluctant to venture in backward areas 
but the government before starting a new industry takes into account not only economic considerations but also social and regional needs next is serving of consumer interest for example ration cards provides by the government helps people to get goods at reasonable prices likewise government hospitals provide services at free of cost or by charging very less amount so the only motive of the state is to serve the people in the best possible way due to this consumers benefits as goods are cheap and no artificial shortages are created next is no waste of social or natural resources for example private enterprises unnecessarily made buildings and waste national resources like coal wood steel so it is said that private enterprises exploit natural resources wastefully for earning profits only but private but public enterprises can adjust themselves to change economic conditions next is equal distribution of wealth so for example like taxes helps reducing the money in the hands of upper section of a society and providing facilities from that the money to each and every person of the country so in private ownership there is a danger of concentration of wealth in few hands wealth means money so public enterprises prevent the inequitable distribution of the national income next is assisting economic development so the profits of the public enterprises can be used to finance schemes of national economic development next is services of experts for example services of experts like accountant engineer computer specialist manager reporter researcher are used by the public enterprises heavy huge financial resources a public enterprise can utilize the services of experts and organize suitable research so next is public sector enterprises play an important role in the implementation of national plans they instill healthy competition with private enterprises and the last one is they increase the income of the state or national so these are some advantages of public sector enterprises so next is disadvantages of public enterprises so our first point is poor management for example the government employees are about age of 50 plus and they have a lack of knowledge of changing environment and that leads to a poor management so due to the bureaucratic control management of the public enterprises is very poor even today many public enterprises are managed by non professionals next is regimentation so for example existing government decides about what things are to be done and how and no suggestions are taken from the society so under this system consumers have no right of selection of goods and choice of the goods next is political interference for example these companies have to submit their annual report to government that what they are doing so government has a direct interference these enterprises are prone to frequent undue interference by political parties next is rigid financial control so for example these enterprises are supposed to work according to the rules of the indian government so these enterprises are generally subject to strict financial control by the government and the parliament committees most often funds are never received in time when their need is more acute next is lack of initiative so for example as government employees came to office to fulfill their duties they are assigned by the upper authority and get salary in return they didn't provide any ideas related to work because they are supposed to get fixed salary only 
so profit is the key to efficiency and initiative the lack of profit motive leads to inefficiency next is improper orientation of public enterprises for example public enterprise like indian rail airlines now changed into private enterprise many authors criticize their organizations on the basis of its orientation because they allege that many public enterprises serves the ends of private enterprises last one is dangers of public scrutiny so these enterprises are always exposed to public criticism these are some disadvantages of public enterprises next is suggestions for improvement of its working so suggestions are like sufficient autonomy should be given for day to day functioning of the public enterprises public enterprises should be free from political and administrative interference the top executive should be given clear cut objectives and complete freedom to function or to functioning their working the top executive should also know the penalty that they might have to pay for insufficient or inefficient working in the business a whole body of knowledge concerning system analysis of organization must exist to assess problems of communication morale labor relations managerial and other training process so these are some suggestions for improvement of the working of public sector enterprises so now you have to write the question answers so your first question is explain the features merits and demerits of government companies second difference between departmental organizations statutory corporation and government companies and the last question that you have to write today is discuss the case for and against public enterprises so go through the various links or youtube links so that you can write the answer of these questions